Before we start the proof, let's first understand some terms. Number one, necessary existent. It always exists. It must exist. It never stops existing. It is completely independent. It is an existent which does not need, require or depend upon any other existent for coming into being. In other words, it does not require a cause to exist. 2. Possible existent. It is an existent which depends on another existent in order for it to be realized. In other words, it requires a cause. In philosophy, the term used is contingent or conditional. It has conditions for it to be realized. 3. Impossible means that it is not possible to exist. Let's explain further. A statement has two parts, a subject and a predicate. A predicate says something about the subject. If I say the apple is red, the apple is the subject and the redness is the predicate where it describes what the subject is. The relationship between the predicate and the subject can only have three states. It could either be impossible, possible or necessary. Is the redness of the apple necessary? Meaning, does the apple have to be red? No, they could be green apples. Is it impossible for the apple to be red? No, we see apples that are red. Is it possible for the apple to be red? Yes. Let's give some more examples. A triangle has three sides. The triangle is the subject and the three sides is the predicate. It could only have three possibilities. Is it impossible? Is it possible? Or is it necessary? Of course it is necessary for a triangle to have three sides. It must have three sides, otherwise it will not be called a triangle. Four is greater than three. Is it possible? Impossible? Or necessary? It is necessary. It must be the case. What if I said three is greater than four? Is it possible? Impossible? Or necessary? It is impossible. The clouds are above my head. Is it possible, impossible or necessary? It is not impossible. It is not always above my head, so it's not necessary. It is possible. These were just some examples of the definitions in our mental world, meaning in our minds. Islamic philosophy only explores the essence of existence and does not delve into its details or its parts, dimensions and so on. It's solely concerned with understanding the existence of things. That also means if something is impossible, it cannot come into existence in the real world. For example, can the number 3 ever be greater than 4? Can a triangle ever have 4 corners? Of course not. These things are impossible in the real world. In saying that, philosophy only studies two types of existence. Possible existence and necessary existence because the other things are impossible in the real world. Let's go back to the examples. So instead of saying the apple is red, they are not concerned about the redness. They are concerned with the existence of the apple. So if I say the apple exists, the apple is the subject and exists is the predicate. Isn't necessary for the apple to exist? Does it have to exist? Is it a must? 4 is greater than 3 is always the case. It is necessary, it must be, no matter what. But does the apple have to exist, no matter what? Is it always the case for an apple to exist? No, it doesn't have to exist. Another way to look at it, did it have a cause to exist? Or was it already existing? If it needed the cause to exist, its existence cannot be necessary. Because remember, the definition of a necessary existent is that it always exists. It must exist. It never stops existing. It is completely independent and does not require a cause to exist. So what's left? The apple is possible to exist. This means something had to happen to bring it into existence. It needed a cause. Now when we look at the world, we see things exist. I exist. The sun exists, an apple exists, you exist, and so on.
For everything in the world to exist, it could have only three possibilities. 1. Everything that exists is necessary, meaning everything that exists didn't require a cause to exist. 2. Everything that exists is possible, meaning everything that exists requires a cause to exist. 3. Some existents are necessary and some are possible, meaning some things require a cause and some things don't. Let's look through the possibilities. 1. Everything that exists is necessary. Is that true? That is impossible. Why? A car or a human, are they necessary? Did they have a cause or depend on something else to exist? Of course they did. The car depends on material and engineers, etc. A human depends on its mother and its father. So this crosses out everything that exists is necessary. 2. Everything that exists is possible. Meaning, everything that exists requires a cause. Is this true? If we look at the world, we will see that everything needs a cause to exist. I need my parents, they need their parents and so on. Everything in the universe had a cause, including an atom. What's wrong with this? Where does this stop? The chain has to stop somewhere, otherwise it would have an endless chain of causes, known as an infinite regress which is logically impossible. It would also mean that nothing can ever exist. Let's explain further. Imagine there is a group of runners that are about to start a race. They all have given themselves a condition that they will not start running unless the person next to them starts running. If they all have a condition, will anyone ever run? This means no one would ever run. Or imagine there are dominoes lined up. They have a condition that they won't move unless the domino next to them moves or gets pushed. If they don't get pushed, they won't move. In the same manner, everything that exists in the world requires a cause. Each has a condition. It cannot exist unless the thing next to it also exists. I cannot exist unless my parents exist. They cannot exist unless their parents exist. No matter how far back we trace this chain, they all have the same condition. If they all have the same condition, will anyone ever exist? No one would ever exist. But when you look at this world, you see things moving. You see things that exist. So something must have happened to start the race. Something must have happened to push the domino. Something must have happened for the world to exist. Something must have happened so that I exist. Therefore an infinite chain of causes is impossible. Otherwise nothing would ever exist. Or another possibility. Imagine there are three runners with the same condition. They will not start running unless the person next to them runs. The first runner waits for the second runner, and the second runner waits for the third runner, and the third runner waits for the first runner. This becomes a vicious circle and is also logically impossible. So this crosses out everything that exists is possible. There must be a necessary being, which leaves us with the third possibility. Some existence are necessary and some are possible. What if someone asks, if everything needs a cause, then a necessary existent, or God, also needs a cause. The answer is, not everything needs a cause. Every contingent or possible thing needs a cause. A necessary being, by definition, can never have a cause to exist. And that is what we were trying to prove, that there is at least one necessary being. A necessary being that must exist and does not require a cause and it is the first cause of all dependent existences. And that necessary being, we call God, but will be explained in further lessons.